A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast here in Australia. What an interesting week it's been around the world as we've watched, you know, politics play out and people sort of jumping and dancing all over the place as Mercury finally finished its retrograde process. And it's always interesting to see as Mercury comes to the end of the retrograde process how people seem as to feel as if they're running out of time, that they've got to get their voice heard, they've got to get things out in the open, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, but it's sort of like a flurry to the finish line. And particularly in the political arenas around the world, from what I've noticed, that, you know, it was sort of like they only had a couple of hours to get their message across and we mere mortals had to sit there and listen to it. Or you could always flip the channel and watch something else, which is what I frequently do, because sometimes I think you you just sort of, you've had enough of people telling you what to do and how to go about it and you just want to chill. You just want a little bit of time to let your mind, your mind wander and do a little bit of daydreaming or just sort of, you know, just relax, just exhale. So this week, the Simply Tarot card of the week is one of my favourites. It's the Magician card. Now, the Magician card, in a lot of tarot decks, people say that it's it's the zero card or it's the number 22 card. I always take the magician first when I used to teach tarot. I like it to be number one because it is the element of surprise. Now, we all know surprises come in good or bad forms. A surprise is one of those ambiguous sort of words that doesn't always mean it's good. If we are taken by surprise by something in our lives, it means we were caught off guard. It's something that we weren't expecting. So many times in our lives, and we've all been feeling this way in the last couple of years, we've been taken by surprise many times with COVID and how things have changed and how local rules and regulations, masks on, masks off, you can go here, you can go there, you can't go here, you've got to stay home, you can only shop on these days or whatever the case may be, that we had plenty of surprises and they weren't all good. But for many of us, that we think of the word surprise and we automatically get excited and we think of somebody giving us a gift or somebody giving us something that we really, really want. So with the magician card, I always look at it, the magician's got all his tools on the table. So he can create anything out of anything. So if you want to bring about changes in your life, then look around you and see what tools you've got in your personal toolkit to make it happen. It is the time of making things happen, and particularly now that Mercury's gone direct, you who let's make sun while the hay, you know, make hay while the sun shines, as they say. So it's a very exciting time of the year where, you know, we've just had the Lunar New Year and those celebrations are still going on. And for a lot of people, it's a time of change. So it's a good time of change because it means that we're starting to get in the swing of 2022. We're starting to feel comfortable with where our lives are heading, hopefully, and that we've got a plan of attack. We've got some directions. We've got some ideas. We've got some things that we're going to pursue, some dreams that we want to make happen this year, and that's good. So starting off with the astrological section of this week, I'm going to kick it off with Mars. Now, Mars is the planet of action. Yes, in more ancient times or older times, if you want to look at it that way, or the way that we used to look at things before we, I suppose, hopefully became more broad-minded, it was connected with the, the planet of war. Now, I know that there's a lot of stuff going on on the Russian-Ukraine border at the moment, and the whole world's biting its fingernails, waiting to see whether or not that will go into a full-blown war. Look, fingers crossed it won't. I'm not going to predict one way or the other. I don't particularly like what I'm seeing, but it doesn't mean that maybe common sense can't prevail. Now, I want to look at Mars in a completely different way today, and let's leave war to one side. Mars is also the planet of action. It's the one that makes us get out of bed of a morning. It's what gives us our drive. It gives us our determination. It gives us our stickability to be able to achieve projects. So without Mars in our chart, all of us would be like unmotivated and wouldn't get anything done. So when you've got Mars holding hands or conjunct Venus, the planet of love and affection, now, Venus can be, yes, where we find new love in our lives, but not for each and every one of us are we looking for a new relationship. Venus quite often transcends into the things that we love to do, the things that bring us joy, the things that we want to achieve, the things that put a smile on our face. And it doesn't always have to be of a creative nature. You might enjoy weeding the garden. You might enjoy taking the dog for a walk. You might enjoy just having a coffee with a friend. It's the things that put a smile on your face. So Mars here holding hands with Venus is asking us 
to get motivated to bring in more into our lives the things that give us pleasure the things that we want to achieve, the things that we were hoping to bring about. And look at this being in the energy of Capricorn where it's very logical, it's very practical. It's also sort of saying dream big, don't sort of, you know, just take your dreams to small scales, you know, broaden the horizons, look for bigger venues, look for bigger avenues to maybe achieve those dreams. It's a time where, you know, the Capricorn energy is about big business, it's about government, but it's also about structure and stability and being able to dream big. And it's about keeping our emotions in check and sort of really planning and really thinking and sort of getting a plan in, in place so that we can achieve the things that we want to achieve in life. Now, these two planets are all, I said that Mars is holding hands with Venus and he is. He's holding hands with Venus, which is a female planet. But they are also making a lovely aspect, which is known as a trine, which means it's flowing, it's easy, it's positive, it, it enhances everything, to the planet Uranus in Taurus. Now, Uranus is the planet of the unusual, the unexpected. Things can happen out of nowhere. Things can happen very suddenly. It's a very electrifying sort of planet. It's known as one of the, the outer planets and one of the ones that's not supposed to have so much of a personal influence on us. Let me assure you, I've been working with astrology for well over 40 years now, and I've seen Uranus really work on a personal level and it can happen very, very fast. It can be here one minute, gone the next, and it's sort of, it can really remove the obstacles or the situations that you see in your life as, as blocking you or preventing you from achieving your dreams. It can also get you out of a rut. So with Uranus here trining Mars and Venus, anything is possible. Let's look for unusual opportunities. Let's look for that opening that you never thought could happen to make your dreams a reality and grab it with both hands because the window of opportunity might only be very small. It may also be asking you to look at how does this sit with your own personal belief systems? Is there going to need to be some personal funds placed into this dream to make it a reality? There's a number of unanswered questions here that only you personally will know how they fit you. This, what the, the indications that I'm giving you isn't going to be every single part of this is going to sit with each and every one of us. We need to take out of it the bits that are appropriate to us. But on a generalised prediction for all the 12 signs, it's a time of opportunity. It's a time where we should get motivated. We should start to put new plans into action. And for some people, that might just be something that sounds very simplistic, but learning to, to slow down a little bit, learning to stop and smell the roses, learning to sort of bring their lives more into balance. And you think, well, how does that work with Mars? Well, you've got to have the drive, the determination, put the planning in place so that you can slow down. You can't just sort of all of a sudden stop and everything falls apart around you. These things take strategic planning. And this is what this is all about. Whatever your dreams are that you're hoping to achieve at the moment and over the next few months, put the plans in place. Make sure that they are achievable, that they are things that you can comfortably work towards without it adding too much stress to yourself. You know, some of us thrive on stress and we think we do anyway. We think, you know, if we're not busy and we're not stressed out and running around like a mad thing, we're not achieving anything. I used to be that person. I've now learnt that you can do things maybe in a less stressful way and still achieve the same results and, and not putting so much taxing energy into your body and sort of always been an overdrive. I don't know that that's particularly good for you either. You know, you can't change who you are as your basic personality, but you can make modifications. You can learn and grow with the things that hopefully we all learn as we go on this wonderful journey called life. And we learn to find our, our own personal boundaries and what works for us and what makes us happy. So this is one of those times where I'm giving you a license to seek out the things that make you happy and try and turn them into your dreams and try and achieve them as your reality over the next few months. We also have Mercury, which we've been talking about earlier in the show, has finally gone direct. It's in a very, very long transit this time even though it was only a bit over three weeks. But we had Mercury sitting there at the end of the three weeks for about five days sitting in a stationary position. So it was sort of almost like the energy was still there. The retrograde was still there. It was still playing havoc with devices and internet services and telephones and messages and everything like that. It was still sort of lingering on. It was like a bad penny. It didn't want to go away. 
but Mercury is finally free of that now. Mercury is conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. So it's interesting now because the shift of Mercury now is going to go on to Pluto. Now we're going to see a number of inquiries around the world that are going to be called for various reasons, whether it's over COVID, whether it's over bad behaviour, whether it's over local laws in your local area, but we're going to see quite an emphasis on communication and inquiries or commissions being called to look into bad behaviour or different situations, and they're not going to be able to get away with it. A lot of this will have a government feel or will have an authoritarian feel. So you you might find in your local area that there's been some commission or some inquiry called into something that's not functioning in your local community, and it's like, Oh, I thought we only did that a couple of years ago. Well, it's necessary for them to go back and have a revisit of this and look at how things have changed and maybe how we can get some better outcomes. So don't be surprised about that. For us mere mortals, on a, a, a per, more personal sort of level, it's the time now that if you really need to have that deep and meaningful conversation of something that's really important in your life, whether it be with your partner or your children or a family member, and it's been something that you've been putting off for a while, and particularly if it's very important, now is the time, but also make sure that they feel comfortable and secure in talking about this because they may not be ready yet. And in some instances, people are never ready. Sometimes you just got to push it and say, right, this has got to be resolved now. We've put this on the back burner for too long. The time is now. So this is that time to have those sort of conversations, but be aware they may not go all the way that you want them to because the other people involved also have an opinion and their opinion is also important. We have sun, the sun sitting in Aquarius, so it's an exciting time of the year that way for Aquarians. And it's also an exciting time for the rest of the signs because this is the time when I think we get some creative, wonderful ideas. We have that very small window of being able to think outside the square, that where we can have those light bulb moments and all of a sudden we might get great inspiration. And I always think it's interesting that it comes, you know, sort of less than a month after we've started the new year and we all have these wonderful new year's resolutions and intentions and they fade pretty quickly. And then it's like we get this second jolt around the lunar new year, which is also the Aquarian time of the year, where we start to get some fresh ideas or we add to what we had or we delete a few and we think, well, that's the, that's the path. I've now finally got it right. And it's sort of like, I think we get in this momentum of being open to our thoughts and the brainwaves that can come and then we get busy and then that sort of goes by the wayside as well. So it's sort of, we've got to work with the energy as the sun moves around the zodiac. We've got to capitalise on what it showcases in that very short window of time and capitalise on it for each and every one of us. We have Jupiter in the planet of Pisces at the moment. Now Jupiter's, you know, only sits in a sign for about 12 months. So Jupiter's, you know, marching through about a third of the way through Pisces now. So a lot of the darling little Pisceans are starting to feel a lot more like themselves because Jupiter used to co-rule Pisces. So it feels very, very comfortable there. So a lot of Pisceans are walking around with a real smile on their face and people say, well, why are you so happy? And I say, no reason, I'm just happy. And that's good because they've had a very tumultuous time with Neptune, their ruling planet has been in there for quite a few years now, been shaking things up and making them feel quite uncomfortable in their own little fish skin. So it's nice to see them sort of feeling quite calm, quite happy, quite excited to be able to sort of calm down and to sort of really start to turn them, their mind to creative endeavours, to things that they want to improve around the home or do some more study or just enjoy, you know, the fruits of their labours and you now have the time to play a little bit more music or have a game of golf or whatever it is that might bring a smile to their face because they have had a really, really tough time. And I know a lot of astrologers sort of call Pisces the sign of the dustbin. I don't look at it like that. I look at the Piscean energy as having the the power and the wisdom of the previous 11 signs. So, you know, and I've worked a lot when and met a lot of Piscean people throughout my life and they're always the most delightful people. Very rarely do you find a negative Piscean. Yes, you might find one that's a little bit timid or doesn't want to shine, you know, in the limelight, but they certainly have a, a wonderful energy about them and they are sort of usually very calming. They don't necessarily like confrontation, but they do find unusual solutions to people's problems. It's sort of like it's a very gentle sort of approach, but they sort of just put a few seeds into your mind and let it fester and let you 
come up with the final solutions, but they've been the one to trigger those thought patterns or those creative ways of looking at something or a different way of looking at things. And that's really interesting because they don't like to sort of claim any sort of fame for themselves or take any accolades that they may have been the one that's instigated and helped you turn your life around. They just sort of shrug their shoulders and swim away and say, oh, well, I was just all in a day's work. I'm just being me. You know, I didn't really do anything. You did all the work. But they were the ones that set things in motion so that we could look at things in a different way. So do, next time you, you meet a Pisces, don't underestimate them. Make them a friend because they can be one of the best friends that you'll ever have for life because they're always there, they're not demanding, they're not trying to push you out of the road for the limelight or anything like that. They just like being, and they're very switched on. They're very intuitive people. And sometimes I think they get very, very misunderstood because they do have a way of looking at a situation and seeing it in four or five different versions and looking at the best one that they think, well, that's the truth. That's got to be the truth because it's the, the, the best outcome. It's the best answer. I like that one better than the other four. So that's why, you know, sometimes people look at them and say, oh, they exaggerate. They're not embellishing or exaggerating something. They've just looked at a number of options and picked the best one and brought it back and that becomes their truth or their reality. So astrology is a very, very fascinating subject. Many people ask me, well, look, I know my sun sign. I know my astrology sign, but how, how can I be affected by so many other things? We have 10 planets or eight planets and two luminaries that make up us. And astrology or our sun sign is one tenth of us. So you might be an Aries, but you might have five planets sitting in Cancer. So therefore you'll have more of a Cancer feel than you will the Aries sun. Yes, you'll have your traits of your Aries sun and that will shine through. But a lot of times the other five planets sitting in Cancer will be more strong or more dominant or have more influence over you. So that's why, you know, one size doesn't fit all in astrology. And it is a completely complex subject. It's something that does take a lot of study, does take a lot of years to sort of learn and understand. But it's one of the greatest tools I, I believe I ever took on board in my lifetime. It gave me the opportunity to understand people and enhanced my work no end because it gave me the patience to understand everybody's different, everybody's unique, and everybody has their own Polaroid picture of where the planets were at the day of their birth. We're going to talk with Kathy in Livingston in California. Are you there, Kathy? Hi. Hi. Do you have a question I can work with, please, Kathy? Um, yeah, I have a question about love. Love, okay. Or is that boring? So is there anybody in particular in your life at the moment, Kathy, that you want me to look at? And don't give me their name. Just give me their first initial, please, sweetie. Uh, the first initial is C. Is. Can you repeat that for me, sweetie? Sorry. Um, oh. The letter C. C it's okay. I'm having trouble hearing this end yet. Yeah, C for cat. Okay, C. Let me tune into that. This is a really interesting connection because... I feel with this person, I want to sort of say I love them and hate them at the same time. They sort of really bring out the best and at times I think they bring out the worst in you. I'm not going to say that that's necessarily a bad love interest. I'm just going to say it's always going to be challenging. There's always going to be something different. So I think what you need to look at with this particular person, is this what I'm looking for as a long-term situation? Or do I think that this would become tiring? And I think for now, I think it's exciting. I think you sort of feel quite connected there. But I'm just not sure that you and this person with the letter C will actually go the distance. I'm seeing a change coming up for you personally, Kathy, around September this year, where your whole life is going to take on a different direction. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that this situation would end badly. I'm just saying your life is going to evolve and take you in a different direction and it's sort of like the parting of the ways will come with that but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a negative I think you'll still remain friends and I feel once this change has sort of started to happen and I think it's connected with work and I'm not necessarily seeing a move a long distance away but I'm seeing a change of job change of residence a change of everything in your life and with that will come a new relationship with somebody that's literally going to sweep you off your feet tall dark headed good looking and absolutely just you're spellbound. You, you, you've never experienced a connection like this. So 
for now, enjoy what you have with C and just see where it goes, but don't put too much emphasis on this maybe being the happily ever after. I think it's meant to be. I think you're going to learn a lot about each other and learn about, a lot about yourselves. And I think it was meant to be. But I also think that this person is going in another direction for themselves too. They may not know that at this point, but I feel this year is going to be a major turning point for them too. While they finally get on their path, at what it is that they really want to achieve for themselves. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some new study around May, June, July, and that will be the catalyst or the start of the changes in their life that's coming up very quickly as well. It's interesting because you're both going to be sort of going through changes at about the same time and things just sort of just unfold. It's like, you couldn't have predicted it if you wanted to. It just it just unravels. So it's an exciting time ahead of you, Kathy. So just enjoy the ride. Don't try and hang on to something that's okay. that's meant to go. Okay, I won't. Okay, so enjoy your time. But I think you know there's a Thank lot you. of exciting things to happen for you this year, Kathy. And I just want you to be sort of flexible enough to run with things as they happen. It's like. Don't set everything in concrete and say, oh, I can't do that because I need to do this. Just say, okay, all right, well, let's look at it. when, If and when it happens, I'll, 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 I'll look at it then. And that's good. That's where we're going to leave, Kathy. now. We're going to talk with Arana in Vancouver, British Columbia. Are you there, Arana? Yes, I am. Do you have a question I can work with, please, sweetie? Uh, yes, I was wondering, um, is, can you get any connection with my sister or uh, my best friend's son who passed away? His name is Ronan and my sister's name is Amanda. Okay. No guarantees I can bring them in in such a short space of time. But what I can tell you is that at the moment, you seem to be very, very, very switched on to absorbing, understanding, getting messages yourself directly from people that have passed over. Now, that's not like they pick up the cell phone and make a phone call, but it can just be in the form of some very strong feelings or you've been thinking about them more or a song comes on and you think, oh, gee, you know, that reminds me of them or when we did this or when we did that. Just keep an eye out for those sort of things because I feel that they are constantly around you. They, our passed over loved ones are always around us, but sometimes they're, they're around us even more as if they're sort of like our shadow. They're with us every step of the way. For the moment, that's what I'm seeing with these two around you. It's like they like your shadow, one on either side of you. And they're both trying to guide you and help you and, and get your life back on track. Would it be fair to say the last six months of last year was not so much scary, but a lot of things that were sort of happening that you sort of felt like you weren't in the driver's seat, that you couldn't control where your life was going. Is that how it was for you, sweetie? Yes, for sure, yes. Yeah, and they're showing me now that they're trying to not so much put the brakes on it, but sort of, you know, if you can imagine one on one side of you and the other on the other side sort of walking with you, linking their arms through yours to keep you steady. You know, it's like to keep you steady, to sort of get your life back on an even keel. And while they're doing that, it's like subtly putting ideas or suggestions into your head and, and it's up to you then whether you say yes or no to it. But I can certainly assure you from from now to about the middle of the year, there will be things will just slowly start to fall into place. And it's like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that happened. You know, that's going to make life easier or, you know, there's a bit more money around. I can pay a few bills or whatever the case may be. And it's just sort of like a slow, gradual progression of these two people helping you get to where you need to go. They're showing me a, an oversized ginormous heart around May. So does that mean that you don't have anyone special in your life at the moment? Um, not really. Um, I lost my sister and ever since then it's been very difficult. And then okay. uh, my 16 year old um, best friend's son passed away uh, six months exactly after that. So it's been Quite uh, emotional uh, roller coaster. Oh, I'm sure you would have been, and you still will be for you know a long time to come. I mean, grief's one of those things that doesn't stop on a certain date because you know a certain period of time's passed. It's a very individual thing, and you know it can come back and hit you again years later as if it's just fresh and it just happened. So don't be too hard on yourself with that. But they were showing me this really, really big, oversized heart in May, and I took that that sort of you were 
if you weren't in a relationship, there was going to be a new relationship and it was going to be engulfing. It was going to be beautiful. It was going to make your heart sing. It was going to make you feel alive again, make you feel that you can you can get excited about the future again. It's not meaning that you'll forget, you know, these two people that have passed away that were very close to you. They'll always be in the back of your mind, but it means okay. that they want you to start living again can you do that for them you know can you try and find each and every day some little thing that can put a smile on your face because that's helping them too it's helping them come to terms with the fact that they're no longer here they go through a grieving process when they leave us too and they've lost all of us we've lost that one person they lose all of us so it's much harder for them so that's how we can help them from earth is to try and honor them in a way of even if it's something simple by putting the smile on our face, even when we don't feel like it and saying, you know, even as the tears are pouring down your cheeks that I still love you and I miss you, but today I'm going to try and be happy just for, for you, you know, because that's how much you mean to me that, you know, you used to bring such sunshine to my life. Well, I'm going to try and be happy and, and, and expand on that energy and, and embrace it and honor it. So, you know, you've got a lot of good things to, to come towards you this year, Arana. And I want you to just sort of just take one hour at a time, sweetie. There's no reason why you've got to be hard on yourself anymore. And just know that things are going to start to unfold and unfold in a very, very positive way. It's always hard when we lose people. We tend to think we're, you know, in such an isolated little world of our own. And we are to a point, but we need to honour them too and try and do something that we know that, that would make them proud of us. So we've come to the end of the show again. It's it's sort of heading into that really exciting time of the year as we head towards Valentine's Day. And I heard a song last night that I was very familiar with the song, but I'd never heard this particular version. And I want to share that with you today. It's called Endless Love. And it was with, with Whitney Houston and her brother, Gary. And if you get a chance, check it out. It was an amazing version of that song and they did a beautiful version of it. Whitney Houston is one of my all-time favourite singers. She has a most magical voice. And to see her sing with her brother was absolutely magical and made me sort of stop and realise that that is what makes the world go round, is it not? It's love, it's not money. It's love makes the world go round. And if we can all find something to bring more love into our lives, whether it be music or watching your favourite show or just having coffee with a friend or just putting a smile on your face, it is the... The universal language, it doesn't matter what language you speak normally, love is the language and we all need to bring much, much more love into our lives and we'll make the world a better place if we can all smile and do something loving for somebody today. So until next week, don't forget, check out Whitney and Gary Houston and Endless Love. Bye for now.